Hello, everyone. Welcome. You are live with The Pricing Lady. I'm Janine Liston, your host and pricing expert. I work with small business owners to help them know what to charge their customers and how to do it right so they can close more deals and earn more revenue, profit in their business. Today, I'm absolutely thrilled to have a very special guest, Ms. Michelle Masters. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the show. Hi, Janine. So nice to be here. Yeah, Michelle, why don't you go ahead and start by introducing yourself to the audience? Um, yes, and I would like to apologize. I was supposed to have a haircut today, but you know, we're all locked in place. <laughs> we're going wild and woolly. Um, I've been doing uh, change work, transformational work with people for about 25 years, and I teach all over the world. And um, my what I'm usually working with is to change blocks and patterns for people. And to do that, you need to understand two things. First off, what keeps people stuck? And mm -hmm. secondly, what lets things move? And so because of that, I know a lot about how the brain works and how emotions work. And pricing is almost all about emotion. Yes, yes, that it is. Thank you so much for, for being here. I, like I said, I'm very excited and uh, I have to tell you all that uh, Michelle is a, quite a, a miracle worker here. I've really enjoyed uh, being in some of her programs and working with her. So uh, just had to get that in there. So Michelle, why don't we start? Because the question that we were posing was, you know, what are the things that are actually influencing the prices I choose in right. my business? Right. Um, well, like I said, it's almost all emotional. And I, I my first thing that I, that I learned that I was a teenager with my grandmother, we went to visit her identical twin sister. They were both pretty serious, but when they got together, they became like two giggly girls. And we were, we went to the store and all of a sudden they both came up to me. And they said, Michelle, we've got to go. We've got to go right away. And they like rushed me out of the store. We got out into the parking lot and they, they collapsed into fits of hysterical laughter. And when they finally calmed down, what they had done was they had been good. They were going to buy some garlic salt, but mm -hmm. apparently they were both outraged at the price. So they decided to shoplift it. <laughs> now, they could both afford the, the garlic salt, right? Of course. And they'd spent so much more on other things, but they were outraged. And so they broke the law. These little old ladies broke the law. <laughs> um, that was my first hint that this was not a logical thing, right? Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to pricing, that's on the customer side, on the, on the, the business side, mm -hmm. one of the things that causes problem with pricing is when people are not emotionally aligned with their pricing. Mm, yeah. So what I mean by that is sometimes they will, um, they will have a price they want to charge, but on the inside, they're not actually sure they deserve it or they're worth it or their service is worth it. Mm -hmm. This almost never goes well. Right, right. Because you're broadcasting two different signals. And mm -hmm. in a minute, if you like, we can talk about why it is that people are unsure about their worth or the worth of their services. Right. Um, so that's one place and um, is when people are not aligned with the prices they're charging. Like I would mm -hmm. recommend people charge less if they're aligned with it than more if they're not. Right. Because at least the... the um, but the ideal situation is when you can have a really robust sense of your worth, of your value, um, and when you're not trying to overcome all your financial limitations through pricing. That's the other thing. Is people will charge too much because mm -hmm. they don't think they can actually control their money. Right. So it's almost like they're trying to win the lottery with their pricing. <laughs> right? True. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I don't know if that answered your opening question. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's it's a really, because a lot of times, you know, I'm talking more about the mechanics of, of how to do it and, and what to do and when to do things. But I think it's interesting, and I strongly believe that, you know, it's all influenced by an undercurrent of uh, a mixture of things for most people. Uh, and sometimes even if you know what to do and how to do it and even if you you feel like you're doing all the right things that there's something underlying that can just simply sabotage it all yeah 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 there's some there's like three kind of main ways people sabotage their business and their money mm -hmm. the first is your unconscious beliefs which are associations mm -hmm. um beliefs start as associations i don't know how much you want me to talk about that but our beliefs aren't just things that happen in our head. They actually filter our perception of reality and our, not just our perception, they actually filter our reality. Mm -hmm. 
So people often think that a belief is a conscious thing that you can do and change. Like, oh, I will decide to believe in abundance. But beliefs aren't actually conscious um, events. Uh So I don't know, is it worth me explaining how beliefs get formed? Yeah, no, that would be great. Because most people don't understand this. They think they can go to a workshop and decide to believe something different, and it's all different. (laughs) But what happens is... Most of the things you believe about yourself and the world are in place by age three and pretty much all of it by six. Okay. And so just to give your uh, your listeners a little bit of information about their brains, because we tend to think of it as first off one brain. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's like three or four kind of patched together with really spotty interfacing. <laughs> like they're just kind of slapped on top. Um, it's like a government bureaucracy. They do not necessarily communicate between the different brains very well. Uh-huh. And so um, we're very proud of this part of our brain, the cortex. That's what we think of as our brain, because that's what does abstract thought and creativity mm-hmm. and meaning. Oh, we love meaning. Can't go a day without meaning. <laughs> and, and time. We're the only creatures to do time. Time happens up here in the prefrontals. It's only mm-hmm. creatures yeah, that do it. It's up here. It's why you'll never see a chicken with a day planner. Right. Right. They don't, they don't do linear time the way we do. And so, um, and consequences. This mm-hmm. is what does consequences. This okay. part. It is actually, though, the last part of the brain to develop. In women, it's not fully developed until somewhere between 20 and 25. And in men, somewhere between 25 and 30. Mm-hmm. Or as my friend Carl says, somewhere between 30 and death right? It's, it really is the last part of the brain to come online. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this is actually relevant to people's business and pricing. And I'll tell you how in a minute, but Mm -hmm. um, we were on a Jeep tour. uh, And we we had the guide to ourselves, we were in the American Southwest, and this guy in his off time, he would do rescues, and he started telling us stories. Mm -hmm. And he said 90% of the people they rescued were men 30 and under, who were sure their vehicle could cross, you know, whatever terrain. (laughs) He said 90% of the snake bites they treat are men 30 and under. Mm -hmm. And of those 90%, he said 95% of those snake bites were bites to the hands or face, (laughs) not the feet or ankles, right? Which gives you an idea of what was going on right before the snake had had enough. Exactly. They they have a joke. What are the first words of English that a snake learns? And it's, dude, hold my beer. (laughs) <laughs> it takes like alcohol and a brain that can't compute consequences right. to think right. that's a good idea. So this is what we think of as our brain, but it's the last thing to come online. Mm-hmm. You've got your emotions, which come online around birth. And then you've got the oldest part of your brain. It's mm-hmm. often called the reptile brain, right. fully functional in utero. And we share this with every creature on the planet. And its main gig is your survival. Right. It does not care if you are happy. It only cares that you're alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't know when people will be watching this, but right now in the middle of this kind of worldwide panic that people are having, what you're actually seeing, these are reptile behaviors. Hoarding mm-hmm. is reptile behavior. It's not a co- it's not a cortex function. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So people stockpiling toilet paper. This is not coming from here. It's coming from here. And all this cares about is that you're alive. Mm-hmm. It doesn't care that you're happy. And so when, uh, when a child starts developing in the womb, they mm-hmm. start having associations. Okay. Like there's no conscious thought, but they are having experience. Uh-huh. And so their brain starts making associations like, I'm here. It's like this. These must be related. So if there's stress or tension going on, mm-hmm. I'm here, stress or tension, They must be related. I must be the cause of stress. I must be too much. Life must be hard. Life must be dangerous. Life must be a certain, like all these associations start getting made long before there's any executive function. And if we don't die, then this part of this old part of the brain regards all of that as good because we didn't die. Right. And it automates it. So those associations become beliefs that life is hard or uh, you can't just uh, charge what you want or money doesn't grow on trees, or you got to work hard to make money, all of those associations become so automated, we do not see them as beliefs. That's just the way it is. That's just how business works. Mm -hmm. But they're actually beliefs. Okay. So how do you start to identify these for yourself? Um, Or can you? 
the more core the belief is, the harder it is to identify because you won't see it as a belief. You'll think, well, that's just how life is. But look at the places where you're not having what you want. Mm -hmm. Like, are you working too hard? Because if you're working too hard, then you have a belief that you have to work hard. I mean, it's that simple. Okay. Right? Um, if you don't make money unless you work hard, then you've also got a belief that you have to work hard to make money. Um, some people have enough money but still have to work hard because they don't believe that they're deserving unless they're working hard. Uh -huh. Right? I was working with uh, someone who was a coach, and she was she was moving into a new uh, – she was going to get be working for a new company. And um, she used she was used to working 16 hour days. And I said, well, do you want to work 16 hour days? And she said, well, how will I prove my worth? And I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, it was so ingrained in her that, of course, she wouldn't be worth that money unless she was killing herself working overtime. Uh, um, yeah. Can you, can, you can you create these? Like, um, how do I want to put this? Like you tell yourself, um, I can be successful or I can be healthy. Is that, you know, those sort of conflicting beliefs, is that something that you can, you create for yourself over time or are they also usually rooted in, in these early uh, associations? Well, the thing is, um, since the, those, your, most of your beliefs are in place by somewhere between three to six years old, mm -hmm. if you think of like a building, and every year that you're alive, you add another floor, another story, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say when you're 35 up here on the 35th floor, you decide, you know what? I would like to work less and make more money. I would like life to be abundant. If you remodel the 35th floor of a building, does it change the foundation? No. And that's the thing. This is what most people try to do. They're actually doing the change in the place that, that's not holding the limitation. Okay. It's like sending a vaccine to a country where there's no disease. Well, you know, <laughs> um, and I don't want to call our beliefs diseases. They're, they're not, but they are software. And yeah. so any software to change it, you have to access the parts of the brain that were developing mm -hmm. when it was laid down. Okay. Um, because those parts of the brain, when we're three and six, they're still in there, but they're not where we're typically operating as adults. Although we get we get tossed into them all the time, right? How many times have you been in a meeting and all of a sudden you feel like you're two years old and kind of frozen? That you get never, sucked. yeah, never, never happened to me either. Ooh, but that's you get sucked that. into a, an old part of your brain, and right. so so people usually want tools to be able to do this kind of work consciously mm -hmm. themselves, which right. is harder. Mm -hmm. It is harder. I mean, when I have something up, I've been doing this work for twenty five years. When I have something up, I go see somebody else. Okay. But um, there are some tools, like I put them in my money magic book, because not everybody is going to work with somebody. That's um, right. But uh, there are very specific ways that work to change the original patterning. Mm -hmm. Once you change the original patterning, that automatic stuff that was holding a limitation mm -hmm. to be automatically holding something that you want. Mm -hmm. Then this is the reports I get all the time. People will say, I don't know. Things just changed. I, I, I didn't do anything differently and my income doubled, right? <laughs> um, these are the things I hear all the time because they rewrote the software that was limiting the income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the beliefs about money and work and the world, that's a big part of it. And then so are people's beliefs about their own worth. Yeah. Because yeah. we won't let ourselves have more than we think we deserve. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you talk about that I really enjoy is this sense of uh, when did I lose my worthiness? Can you share that a little bit more with people? Well, because typically we come in all bright and shiny, you know, and then we start to um, we start to lose contact with that really quickly. Um, it can happen even in the womb. Um, so if uh, it can happen in many ways, it's not always because your sense of worth is in place by age three pretty much. By three years old, most people, the decisions about their worth, their fundamental worth is done. Mm -hmm. And most people do not feel hugely worthy. And by the way, a sense of worth is not the same as a sense of entitlement. Okay. Usually a sense of entitlement is an inside out lack of worth. In the same way that people who are really insecure often act like braggarts. Right, right, right. 
because they actually don't have an, an actual sense of security. Mm -hmm. So insecure people can often act like braggarts and entitled people usually don't have a, a really clear sense of their worth. When people have a really clear sense of their worth, um, it's, it's like being around nature because nature easy. doesn't question its worth, right? Uh huh. Yeah. It doesn't. Like I got a, a huge 300 foot redwood tree out there. It's not cons am I is it, is it okay for me to be this big? Am I am I taking up too much sunlight? You know, it's not a problem for it. Right. Right. This is part of the beauty of being in nature or with mm -hmm. with animals is they're not worried about their worth. Right. And so it's so much easier to be around them. But we mm -hmm. as humans, we're always trying to measure it, uh check for it, increase it, it, right? Mm -hmm. um, judge it yeah um <laughs> compare it to other people yeah mm -hmm. and and it's crazy it's crazy yeah. um how, how do you judge one tree against another right that um we we can do it but to yeah. the rest of nature that's like crazy yeah it's un, un, um, not understandable or incomprehensible yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. when it comes to to pricing and and how people are I guess their relationship with it in, in their businesses, uh, what, what can they do? Um, well, it depends on where they are stuck, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a good thing is some, some good things to check. Um, Get Michelle's book. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that, that helps. Um, that helps. But, uh, I would say you could start with a simple exercise like this, like, mm -hmm. and, and there's some of this, actually this exercise in the book, but um, you let your brain fill in the blank in order for my business to succeed. I need to mm -hmm. like, and don't think about it. You like let certain things pop up right? to notice kind of what's in there um, mm -hmm. because there's going to be, you're going to have beliefs about your business. You're going to have beliefs about money. You're going to have beliefs about your worth. Success. Um, they're not necessarily all bad, mm -hmm. but if you're not having what you want, then mm -hmm. there are things in the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So once you start to know what the things are that are in your way, then you're a lot closer to being able to get some help to revise those. But if right. you don't know what people do is they try to overcome with effort, which mm -hmm. just wears them out. Which is exhausting. Yeah. Exhausting. Yeah. Exhausting. Mm -hmm. It takes all the joy out of life and your, and your creativity goes way down, mm -hmm. right? Your joy yeah. of your business goes way down mm -hmm. and that translates too to the people on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. a lose, lose. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the prompts that you give us, like the one you just mentioned, I found them really helpful. Um, and also, I, I remember the first time I did it, uh, one of the prompts was, uh, my mother could never, and the answer was, find her keys. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, my mom, if you're watching, but she could never, ever find her keys. But, you know, most of it, I found, you know, that was just a funny one, but it was, it was relevant. And when you don't really think about what you're writing down to finish these prompts, you know, things come up that you're like, oh, wow, is that really what I, what I think? And so I guess what you're saying is those are the types of things that you're, that you're looking for. Right. Because we don't, any of us have one belief about anything. We tend to think mm -hmm. we have like one belief, but no, we have multiple contradictory beliefs because yeah. we had contradictory associations, contradictory mm -hmm. experiences. So there were some times when all of us had a good experience. Or, right. or you wouldn't be on this broadcast or you'd be under a bridge somewhere or dead, right. right? If you hadn't had any good experiences. And there are all of us who have had some not so good experiences or you wouldn't be on earth, right? You'd be <laughs> um, and so we have contradictory experiences, which mm. means we have contradictory beliefs. Right. And our experience tends to be a, a net out of the contradictory and, the, and the, the useful ones. So the more of those unuseful um, associations and beliefs you get revised, the more the balance starts to shift hugely in, right. in your favor. Right. The life works easier than the customers you want find you. This mm -hmm. one lady, she was doing it. She was in the, the online money magic and she did the exercise around worth. Mm -hmm. And the next week she said, in the week since I did that, my business has five X. And she said, I was just at home in my pajamas and people kept calling. <laughs> right. 
right. they call her. And that's the thing that I hear so much about people who change their yeah. beliefs is they say, these people found me. They right. asked me how they could pay me. Right. So if you're struggling with people not doing that, mm-hmm. then it's a, just a sign that, okay, there's some old beliefs in there's the something way. In the way. Yeah. 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 Super. So Michelle, we need to wrap this up. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave people with or any last thoughts? Mm -hmm. And that's it. There is so much possible for all of you in terms of your business, your money, your health. You have no idea how much is possible. Mm. We so underutilize what's available to us. And all of you, I wish I could convey the beauty and worth that you are, but everything that you do that lets you feel that more is a gift to us all. So I hope that all of you get to experience more of the worth and beauty that you are. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michelle. And I I did that as well. I mean, really, I think everybody is just a big old bundle of potential and um, we need to to remind ourselves of that and and live that. Yeah. So Michelle, what's the best way for people to reach you? Well, they can reach me through my website, uh, michellemastersnlp.com. Okay. um, Email. Or if you can find me on Facebook, you can message me there. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, great. Also, I'll put it in the comments as well as I'll put a a link to the Money Magic book. I can also recommend that. It's uh, very helpful and a way to get into the topic and start to learn more about um, ways to work on these core beliefs and, and how Michelle goes about doing that. So thank you to all of you who have been watching us live. I've been watching you pop in and out. Uh, Thank you very much. This was a new day in time for us uh, this week, but I was thrilled to see so many of you watching. If you have any questions about how to improve pricing in your business, you can also book a discovery call with me. You'll see the link here on the bottom. You'll also be able to find that on my Facebook page. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you, Michelle, as well, for joining us. And I wish you all the best. Stay healthy and enjoy pricing, everyone. Take care.